Hello. Have you ever found yourself frustrated with the Apache mod rewrite module? Have you ever found yourself hacking away at some of the rewrite rules trying to get something to work? If so, this class is for you. In this training, we're going to talk about getting Apache installed with mod rewrite. We'll pull up and configure a couple of virtual hosts to use with our mod rewrites. We have a couple of lessons on regular expressions, and we'll get you up to speed on how to work with those inside rewrite rules and rewrite conditions. We'll look more in depth at the rewrite variables that are available to our rewrites and to our conditional statements. We'll go on to discussing how rewrite condition directives work and how we can stack them together to build logic for our rewrites. We take a fairly deep dive into rewrite map a very powerful and yet unutilized part of mod rewrite. We'll look closely at some of the flags and what those flags are for and how they are used in rewrite rules. And then finally, we finish up with rewrite logging, a little bit on security, and some advanced stuff on content generation, load balancing, and a little on access control. Greetings and welcome to your Infinite Skills training course. This movie is going to help you find and easily access your working files for your Infinite Skills course. The working files are designed to allow you to work alongside the author as they're teaching the course material. And in most cases, the author will announce whenever they have provided a working file. Please note that the courses seen in this video may not be the same as the course you are currently learning. This video is meant only to demonstrate how to get your working files. If you are a subscriber to our learning library, you will see a download working files button once you get into the details of the course. To download the working files, simply left click on the download working files button and your browser will automatically download the working files as a zip file. Once the working files have finished downloading, you can simply extract the downloaded zip file and place them directly onto your desktop. It's as easy as that. If you have downloaded this course from our website, then you will have gone to a download page that looks like this and you may see that the working files are a separate download file. Once you have downloaded the working files, you can extract the downloaded zip files and place them directly onto your desktop. From the player, you will see a menu bar located up here with various buttons just above the video. From the player menu bar, look for this button. When you move your mouse over it, a label will show up that reads Open Working Files. Left click on this icon and a window will open up to show you where the files are located. You may see multiple files as the working files are organized within them. To make things easier for yourself, we suggest copying all of these working files to the desktop of your computer. Please note that if you downloaded the working files separately as we mentioned earlier, you will not see them here. However, you should already know where they are as you should have extracted them and placed them somewhere on your computer, well like the desktop. If you are watching this from the DVD, there are a couple of ways to access the working files directory so you can open up your files. Now you will only be able to open these files from the DVD. If you make some changes and would like to save them, you will need to save them onto your computer. Copy the working files to the desktop as we have shown earlier from the player. This way you can find them quickly and easily because they are located on your desktop and you can open and save any changes as you work along with the lessons. You can also find the working files by going directly into the files folder. To get to this folder from your DVD on your PC, go into your computer, find your DVD drive with the disk in it, and select it. You will see that there will be a working files folder on the disk that you can drag and drop to your desktop. You can also copy this to your desktop by right-clicking on the folder and selecting copy, then right-clicking on your desktop and selecting paste. If you are on a Mac, click on the DVD icon for the disk on your desktop. A window will open and show you all the files on the disk. You can then drag and drop the working files to your desktop. You can also copy this to your desktop by right-clicking on the folder and selecting Copy, then right-clicking on your desktop and selecting Paste. Hello and welcome to Apache Mod Rewrite Getting Started. Have you ever wanted to change the location or the server that your website is being served from? 
but you're afraid to do that because maybe the links that everybody has out there for your website are fixed to a certain location, and by changing your website URL, all those links would have to change. Well, in this lesson, we'll talk about using the Apache Mod Rewrite module, discuss what Mod Rewrite is, why use Mod Rewrite, in addition to simply using it for redirecting traffic to our website if we want to change its location. We'll actually install the Apache web server. I'll give you a couple of links for installation if you're using the Windows operating system and the Mac operating system. We'll talk a little about enabling the Apache Mod Rewrite module. We'll confirm the settings and finally test the Apache web server to make sure that the mod rewrite is rewriting our URLs. Now, what I'm talking about when I say URL rewriting, let's say you've got a URL that looks like this, www.mysite.com, products, boats, and then maybe a boat.php file and boat ID equal to say five. Now that URL right there should direct to your mysite.com. And let's say you wanna change your mysite.com to something else. And all of a sudden you've got a new URL that looks something like this, my boats, and it's got products, boats, boat ID, PHP. And instead of adding it like this, you could say five. Now that URL right there is something that would have to be changed in all the links out there to your site, assuming you changed your site to myboats.com, products, boats, and five. This is where the Apache mod rewrite comes into play. Apache is a web server. It has a module called mod rewrite that would allow you to actually rewrite the URL, represent it on the user's browser as the redirect, and rewrite to your new location, in this case, myboats.com. What we're talking about here mostly is URL rewriting, which allows us to have the Apache module rewrite a URL and redirect it to a new location. That's the most common use of mod rewrite. Now we're gonna talk about installing the Apache web server. Of course, you have to have Apache web server installed in order to use mod rewrite because it's part of Apache. Let's toggle back over to our browser and I had previously brought up a couple of different screens that allows you to either install in a Windows environment here, apachelounge.com download is a site that allows you to download the latest 64 or 32 bit version of Apache, get the binary and install it in Windows. If you're using the Mac operating system, here's a site that you might choose to go to directory.apache.org studio download for the Mac, OS X operating system. Again, the 64-bit version and the 32-bit version, depending on the type of operating system you're running. For this class, I'm going to install it in the Linux Mint operating system because most production sites are running Apache on a Linux server. The way to install Apache in a Debian-based Linux system like Linux Mint would be to simply go to a terminal like this and type sudo, which is super user do, apt get install apache2 hit that it'll prompt you for your password i'll enter my password here it'll go about the business of installing apache so in this case i'm going to say yes i want to install the upgraded version let it go ahead and do that now in this case i'm installing the version of apache that came with the distribution of the latest version of linux mint there we are done the Apache install directory is relative to the operating system you're working in. So in the Linux Mint file system, the Apache directory is located at, and I'll just navigate over to it, CD ETC Apache 2, and list this directory, and I'm just gonna put a dash L switch on it so I can see the permission settings as well. And I can see a directory with the Apache 2.conf file, that's the primary configuration file for the Apache 2 web server. Now in Linux Mint or in the Linux Debian distributions, to enable the mod rewrite module, execute the command, sudo a2 enable mod, a2 en mod rewrite. And it'll say enabling module rewrite to activate the new configuration, you need to run service Apache 2 restart, sudo, Service, Apache 2, restart. 
Again, this will be different depending on the operating system you're using. There, we have the Apache 2 installation done. We have enabled the mod rewrite module. Now we're going to confirm our settings and test. We'll do that in the next lesson. Hello, welcome back. In this session, we'll continue with the enabling of the Apache mod rewrite. We'll make a couple of configuration settings and finally test to make sure the mod rewrite is rewriting our URL. Let's toggle over to our web browser. In this case, we're using Google Chrome. Let's add a tab and try out the Apache web server. To do that, all we'd have to do is type localhost and we should get something back. In this case, what I got back is a welcome to mysite.com. Now the file that produces this welcome to mysite.com is located in the Linux Mint system at this address. And if I list this directory, I can see the index.html file here. If I look at the contents of index.html, in this case, I'll use the cat command, just to list the contents, I see that I've got an HTML tag, an h1 tag saying, welcome to mysite.com. That's the default site that the Apache web server is responding with the content of the index.html file. If we want to redirect and double check this to make sure that we can change our site, rewrite the URL to something new, we'd need to actually edit the default virtual host. That's located at slash etc slash Apache2. These directory locations may be something different based on the type of operating system you're working with, but in this case, Apache and the virtual host configurations are located at etc slash Apache2. If I list this, I can see that I have a directory called sites available. Let's navigate into that, list this, and what we'll need to do is open and edit the 000-default.conf file. To do that, type sudo gedit 000-default-config. Should open up the GNOME editor. And it's first going to ask me, because this is root level file access privilege, it's going to ask me for my password. And should launch the gedit tool and open up the file. Here's the file. And at this point, we have the default configuration file open. The only thing we need to add to this file is a directory tag, and we'll directory to var www slash html forward slash and the tag. Let's put an ending directory tag here. This encapsulates the configuration for a specific directory in Apache, and we're going to add the configuration directive allow override space all. The allow override all directive here tells Apache that the mod rewrite will override or be able to override the URL at this specific directory level. That should be working correctly. We'll save this and close it. We need to restart the Apache web server so the changes we've made to the configuration file will parse, changing the behavior of the Apache web server. So let's restart the Apache web server. sudo service Apache2 restart. And we get this, could not reliably determine the server's qualified domain name. Let's actually fix that real quick. Let's back up one level in our directory, list this. The change we need to make is to the apache2.conf file. So let's do that, sudo gedit apache2.conf. Open up the editor. And at the bottom of the main Apache configuration file, let's add a line of configuration here. The line we're gonna add is server name, and we're going to give it my site. That should work just fine. Close this, save it. Restart again the Apache web server because we've made changes to configuration and that's something we'd need to do every single time. Service, Apache 2, restart. And in this case, you will not see that unable to determine the server's fully qualified domain name. This time it has a domain name that it can fall back on. In this case, we got an okay. The server's been restarted. Let's navigate to where our site is located, www slash HTML. List this, we can see our test file. Let's create what's called an HT access file. An HT access file is an Apache configuration file that is specific to a directory level. So when we add changes to the Apache configuration file, HT access, it's only applicable to the given directory, in this case, where my index.html file is. So sudo gedit.htaccess. And this file will open up the editor. 
And in here, we're going to give it the very first command that we should always use with mod rewrite, rewrite engine on, base on, and we'll give it a rewrite rule. This is the very first configuration directory that makes the rewrite engine work, a rewrite rule. We're going to give it a regular expression pattern to search on to begin with. And that pattern we're going to use is a caret symbol, which is a meta character in regex engine. What we're essentially telling mode rewrite to do here is to look for index.html file. And this caret symbol means that the pattern that it's looking for has to start with an I. The dollar sign means it needs to end with an L and space, give it the name of the file we want it to redirect to, in this case, test.html. And that should be adequate for testing to make sure our mod rewrite is working. Let's go ahead and save this and navigate over to our browser and type localhost.com again, and let's see what it comes up with. There we are. We redirected to our new boat site. We can see that. We can now know that the mod rewrite module is in fact working. The configuration changes that we made to the Apache 2.conf file and the default virtual host for our site have been effective. And we are now redirecting all of our web traffic to our new test.html. We're gonna wrap getting started with mod rewrite with a couple of use cases on when and when not to use mod rewrite. If you have a rewriting complex URL issue, in other words, in your URL, it would look something like this, www.mysite.com, boats, boats.php, and then a question mark, and boat ID equals one, ampersand, color is assigned to red, if you have a reason to rewrite a URL that looks like this to something more like uh, boats or just simply one boats and then one, and then even to the extent that you do something like this red. So mysite.com boats one red, that previous URL would need to be rewritten like this. This is a good use case for using mod rewrite if you have a complex URL that you have to rewrite to something simpler. Now, some people think that the other version that I had up here with a question mark and the server variables at the end of that are not readily indexed by search engines. That's not the case. Search engines can index those just fine. These are easier for our human eyes to read. So if you'd like to rewrite your URL to something like this, which is easier to read, mod rewrite is a good use case for that. It also can be done using the server-side software too. So if you're actually writing code to create your site, you might choose to write your server-side software to write your URLs like this in the first place. So if that's possible for you, that's the route I would go rather than using mod rewrite. The other option would be to swap virtual hosts. If you have two or three virtual hosts, it's not a big deal. But if you have more, it can be kind of a maintenance nightmare. So if we go into Apache 2, where our virtual hosts are identified, at least in the Linux Mint operating system, that's located at etc, Apache 2, and inside the directory called sites available, and list this, we'll see that we have this default config. If we just cat this to display it on the screen, Every host that you host a website will have to have the virtual host tag set up for Apache to read every time it starts and pick up the specifics about the document route for a particular website. Some behaviors, in this case, we're allowing the mod rewrite to actually run inside the var www.html directory and log level warnings and where to find the logs and that sort of thing. So you would have to have a virtual host tag-based instruction for every one of your sites, which is not a big deal if you're not an ISP. If you only have two or three hosts, then go ahead and set them up like this. But remember one thing, every one of these virtual hosts requires the Apache web server to parse this information and set it up. So if you've got 25, 30, 40 sites that you're hosting, the Apache web server has to parse all of these virtual host tags before it can actually restart. And the management of all of these virtual hosts can become a real major constraint in productivity. 
In the case where you might manage a number of virtual hosts and you might use mod rewrite to dynamically set the virtual host and point it to a directory using regular expressions. That's another good use case for mod rewrite. Complex site changes. Complex site changes would be if you were going to come over to our browser and instead of www.mysite, you want to allow www, but you might want to just have mysite.com. Or you might want to say go to.mysite.com or please.com to mysite.com. If you want to change how your site is found, accommodating maybe some marketing terms or something that will draw people to your site using a very complex type of URL rearrangement like this, that would also be a good use case for mod rewrite. And then lastly, a good use case for mod rewrite would be conditional logic rewrites, the rewrite condition statement, which we will talk about a little bit later. Now, if all you're doing is redirecting, the Apache web server has a alias module, which you can enable. You would do that with the same command. Let's clear the screen. You would use sudo a2 enable mod alias. If you do that, module alias you see here is already enabled on this system. If not enabled, it would require you to restart the web server with service Apache 2 restart. After you've done that in your HT access files, you can do something like this. Let's navigate over to var www.html, list our HT access files. Let's go inside that. And instead of writing a rewrite rule, or even for that matter, a rewrite on statement, come up here and say, insert redirect. And in the redirect engine, you won't be using regular expressions for this. You'll just say, hey, if my site is on mysite.com, but we want to allow sites to redirect from www.mysite.com to mysite.com, that's all you simply have to do to do a redirect once you've enabled the Apache 2 alias module. So for simple redirects, use the alias module rather than mode rewrite, simply because it's a lot simpler to understand, a lot easier to implement. We don't have to know regular expressions to do so. And then lastly, when there is no other way to do what you want to do, then reach for mod rewrite. Generally speaking, there's just about nothing you can't do with mod rewrite using linked together conditional statements or complex regular expressions or something like that. You'll be able to use mod rewrite to do just about anything you're after. We're starting a new section here on regular expressions. Regular expressions makes it possible for a parsing engine, in this case, the Perl parser, to take a look at a set of characters and match to a given pattern. If the pattern matches the characters, then we can say that we have a pattern match. Some of you may be familiar with that where we use wildcards in some cases to look for files with the asterisk. Well, regular expressions are sort of wildcards on steroids. So in this segment, we're gonna talk about the regular expression engine, what it is, what meta characters are and how to use them, what pattern matching is, what character classes are, and we'll look at a testing tool. In fact, we'll do that right away, looking at our very first example on how to make the regex engine work. If you have ever seen regular expressions, they might look a little cryptic, sort of like hieroglyphics. So this is an example here of a regular expression. It looks like gobbledygook. It's very cryptic looking, but we're gonna explain what every single one of these characters are, including the very beginning character, this caret symbol, down to the very end dollar sign and what's going on in here between. The way the Perl compatible regular expression engine works is analogous to characters being dribbled out of a pipe, one character at a time. So we would start with a URL very similar to this URL here, httpmysite.com, products, boats, boat ID equals one. And we would dribble a character out one at a time and analyze that character against a pattern match. Let's start right out, taking a look at an example in the Chrome browser. Now here, I have installed an extension in my Chrome browser called the Regex Tester app. 
Now there's a lot of these applications out there, some of which are extensions that can be added to your browser, some of which are standalone applications that run on your desktop, some of which are just websites that allow you to do testing. I like this particular one, it's very easy, so I'm gonna use it. So we'll open this up. And just as an example of what we'd be looking for in Mod Rewrite would be search patterns like index.html. This will come through as part of our URL, and we may want to match on this pattern. A regular expression syntax pattern would look something like this. We would use the caret symbol, and I'll explain what that is here in a second, index.html, and then a dollar sign to finish this out. What the caret symbol does at the beginning of this says that the very first character that is dribbled out of the pipe is an I character, this I character. Now these characters, you should think of them as tokens. So the very first character here is the I. It has to be the very first character to dribble out the pipe because we preceded that with the caret symbol. The caret symbol says that the very first character that dribbles out has to be an I to have a pattern match on the I. So if this right here is our search text, I is the very first character that's gonna dribble out and in fact will match the I in the pattern. So I is matched, then the regular expression engine will dribble out the N as the next character out of that pipe. The regex will look at the pattern and say, okay, the next one is an N, I'm matching this, and so forth all the way through this, including the dot HTML, until it gets to the end of the pattern denoted by the dollar sign. And as it applies, in this case, the L has to be the last character that dribbles out. And in fact, if this phrase or this word index.html is run all the way through that pipe, character by character, it'll match the entire pattern. This regex tester tells us that because it says, hey, we've got a match index.html. The caret symbol here, meaning to start the pattern with the I and end the pattern with the L, are what is considered meta characters. Meta characters meaning they have special meaning to the regular expression engine. So these are boundary characters to encapsulate our pattern. Now within the regex engine, there's a meta character used to sort of be a wildcard character for any character, and that is the dot character. In this case, this dot character is a literal character as it exists as a dot character in the index.html set of characters. So we wanna treat this as a literal character and not as some wildcard character, which the regex engine interprets dots as. So we need to precede this with a backslash. A backslash is considered a meta character, but it is what's called the escape character, meaning that if it precedes a character, it's telling the regex engine that that character that follows the backslash needs to be treated as a literal character. In this case, it would be a literal dot. So this is the proper way to build a regular expression pattern match for index.html. Now, the only thing that this will match is index.html. What would happen if we were to pass in htm? We would not have a pattern match right here. As we can see, no matching pattern. So how would we modify this pattern to make it match either htm or html. Well, there's another meta character. The meta character that we can use to modify the pattern such that it will match htm and html would be a question mark. The question mark is a quantifier meta character. There's a number of different quantifier meta characters. We'll look at a couple of them. The question mark makes the previous character token, in this case, the L, optional. Either it matches zero or once of the previous character token, which is the L here. In this case, when I put the question mark here and I passed in index.htm, remember this is the string of characters that are dribbled through the pipe. And after we got down to M, we were actually finished dribbling those characters out of the pipe. And we made that last character, the L here in this case, optional with the question mark. Therefore, we got a pattern match here. And if we add an L to this, which is what we originally had, we still have a pattern match denoted with their coloring here. That's what the question mark allows us to do. Pattern match optionally 
zero or one times. That's why it's called a quantifier because it's pattern match zero times or one time on the previous character token, which in this case is the L. Now I could do exactly the same thing at the very beginning of the string. I could say, let's say our search text had this, HTTPS colon slash slash. This is the URL I'm gonna run through my mod rewrite for my pattern. And the pattern obviously shows me no match here, match to zero. If I added HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, then I'm finding that I in fact do have a pattern match here indicated by the coloring again. If I left out the S and had it transmit, our URL is transmitting over regular HTTP protocol, we would not have a pattern match. To make that applicable for either case, HTTPS or HTTP, we'd put the S in the pattern and make it optional. Now, the S is optional, zero or one times, in other words, that question mark will match the S, zero or one times. And now I can change the search text to say either HTTPS or simply HTTP, and we still have a pattern match down here. So that's the idea of the question mark. So either way, I could pass this in, I could pass this in, or I could pass this in, and I'm still gonna get pattern matches. Hello and welcome back to our discussion on regular expressions and discussing how to work with pattern syntax using meta characters, character classes. We were trying to solve for this sort of regular expression that you see here, where we've got the caret symbol and then some character contents between the caret symbol and the dollar sign. Toggling back over to our testing application, let's address the dot character. Now the dot character, as it is shown in this pattern here, is treated literally because we have the escape character here. Now, the dot character is a meta character in the regular expression engine, meaning that if we don't escape it, so if we had something like this, and we did, oh, let's say, a zero or more quantifier, which is indicated by the asterisk, this dot would match any character zero or more times appended to the word index or to the X here. Oftentimes you'll see mod rewrite regular expressions written such that the part of the regular expression match or pattern match looks like this, which means it'll match any previous character token zero or more times. You might also see it with a plus symbol it's also a quantifier, it means one or more of the previous character. Now, oftentimes you'll find patterns that look like this, that will be wrapped in parens. Now, parentheses group regular expressions. What that means is, in the regular expression engine, when you wrap something with a parentheses, that part that's inside the parentheses is sort of created like a variable, such that you can go back and reference that later on. And now we're using regular expression tester here. When we look at it written in mode rewrite, we'll see that a lot of our regular expressions are written with parentheses wrapping the expression pattern itself. And later on, you'll see something like this, $1. This is the part of the pattern that you will find in the mod rewrite. The dollar sign use case meta character here means that the pattern has to end with whatever the preceding grouping or character token is. Over here, the dollar sign will reference back to this. So it's almost like taking exactly this part of the pattern here, copying it and putting it right here. To back reference to a previous grouping, dollar one. Now, if you had another grouping in here, let's say you did a, a literal dot, a grouping for com, a pipe symbol, net, pipe symbol, biz, pipe symbol, org, and another grouping here, if this was our pattern right here, this says that we have anything one or more time prior to a dot character, a literal dot character denoted with the escape backslash. And then we've got another grouping here for this part of the pattern. Now that would be saved as a back reference $2 and so on. So if you had another grouping beyond here, that would be referenced as $3 and so on. 
So now the content of this second grouping here means that we are looking for COM as a character token, or NET as a character token, or BIZ as a character token, or a ORG as a character token. The pipe symbol makes all of these optional. So what we have here is a pattern that says anything can be preceding the dot character and following the dot, which is what a domain is built like, it can contain com, net, biz, or org. Now in this case, if we wanted to have our site referenced by .com, .net, .biz, .org, we could do so, and then later on in the mod rewrite, redirect it to say .com if that's what our actual site is. Let's take this out of here and say mysite.com, we can see that we have actually a pattern match for mysite.com optionally for com, for net, for biz, for org. This paren grouping like this, this first paren grouping, the second paren grouping can be used to back reference with $1 and $2 respectively. The second grouping here allows options, com or net or biz or org. We could also have something that looks like this, which in this case, the wildcard character, the dot, matches any character. The plus symbol means one or more of any character of the previous token. The asterisk is zero or more, so we could optionally not even pass even my site and still get a match, as we see here. We can also use what's called a character class. A character class is noted with a set of open and closing square brackets, and we could say anything wild A to Z with a lowercase letter. That's a character class. So what this means is that the entire a to Z lowercase alphabetical set is considered a lowercase token will match any single character. And we would only match on domain names that were uppercase. Now, obviously that's not what we're gonna do. Typically domain names will be referenced as lowercase, but we could accommodate uppercase if we needed to. So that's called a character class. In this case, we have a range from uppercase A to uppercase Z. We could also have a range of digits zero to nine. That'll match any digit from zero to nine a single time. Now we could say A to Z, one or more with a plus symbol of the previous token. And in this case, I have a mysite.org match because we can match on any domain name with A to Z. So any domain name you pass in here, as long as it ends with either com, net, biz, or org and has a literal dot in it, should find a match. So I could say example.com should still match. Example.org should match. Now that's not overly useful, but I'm showing you this example right here to the, for the purpose of illustrating how character classes work. Now this can extend to looking for, let's say an image name. You could say, I want to find company. We have a company logo image and we're going to look for JPEG, PNG, and if we find either JPEG or PNG, then we'll get a match. In this case, we'd say company.png should be a match, and it is, or .jpeg. So regular expression patterns made up of groupings, meta characters, character classes, special tokens are used to create pattern matching such that you can pick up a particular pattern and redirect it or rewrite it, which is our goal with mode rewrite. But let's go back to what we were looking at before. So here we've discussed the caret symbol, A to Z, zero to nine digits, literal dot, and again, com, net, biz, or org. One last thing that you'll see frequently done in pattern regexes, is a negation character. A negation character will precede the whole pattern, which this now means that anything that is not something in the pattern. Now, occasionally you'll see a character class that'll look like this. Square bracket, A to Z lowercase, A to Z uppercase, 0-9, and an underscore and another bracket. That's a character classing that says anything A to Z lowercase, anything uppercase A to Z, or anything zero to nine in that digit range plus an underscore will match a pattern. 
Usually that's appended with either a plus symbol or an asterisk symbol here, which are quantifiers zero or more or one or more of the previous token. Now the previous token here, again, is, is represented by the entire character class. If you have a character class like this, there are shortcuts. For this same thing, you can use backslash W. A backslash D represents a character class that is zero through nine. It's a digit character class shortcut. Now you also might see, instead of a plus symbol or an asterisk or question mark, a quantifier indicated like this. In this case, it's specific to three matches of the previous token. So in order for this pattern to match, it has to find three digits. But in this case, we're being very explicit with the amount of characters that we need to match. We need to match exactly three. You might also see this where we would match minimally three and no maximum. Or you might see it written like this where you say comma three, there's no minimum, but there's a three maximum. So we could either find on nothing or up to three. Or we could have a min max where we say one, we got to find minimally one match and at the most three of the prior character token, in this case, the shortcut digit representing the character class zero through nine. In this segment, we're gonna talk about setting up the virtual host environment for both mysite.com, myboats.com, and editing the system host file to identify two new hosts. So we'll need to do that first and test out, make sure that they're working and we'll go on with our mode rewrite exercises. So if we toggle over to our terminal application, we need to set up a few things prior to this lesson, and I wanna share with you what I've done. Now, in order to create a couple of different sites to work with, mysite.com and myboats.com, I created Apache configuration virtual hosts to do that. If we navigate over to etc, Apache 2, sites available, and we list this, we'll see that I have now a myboats.com.conf and a mysite.com.conf. Those are virtual host configuration files that once enabled using the A2 enable site command, you can actually execute that and Apache will say, please restart me once you've done that and actually created directories for your actual different websites, Apache will then serve to those different websites. Looking at just one of these as an example, and I'll make sure that these are available documents when we finish with this training. If I look at the mysites.com.conf, I'm gonna go ahead and say sudo vim mysite.com.conf. We'll just look at the contents of this. It'll prompt me for my password. Open this up. And this is virtual host configuration for the mysite.com. Now here, I've added a server name to my site. I have created the document root directive, Apache directive, to look inside var www slash mysite.com. I've also added the directory tag and its source var www.mysite.com forward slash and the directive allow override all, which will allow mod rewrite to execute the commands and directives in the HT access files if it's found. And I have another one of these just like this for myboats.com. We close this out. Once we have those configured, now again, this is for a Debian based web server version of Apache. Your Windows or Mac operating systems install directories for all of these virtual hosts will be a little bit different. I'll have you refer to those operating systems for Apache's installation. At least in the Debian-based Linux operating systems, the document roots will be located at var www, or at least this is where they are by default. If I list this, I've already created myboats.com, mysite.com. Now, if I go inside one of these, because these are directories, set directory mysite.com, list this, I see I have an index.html file. If I just cat the content of index.html, I can see I've got an HTML tag and an h1 tag, welcome to mysite.com. 
If I list this with LA, I can see that I also have an HT access file. This file right here will be the file that we start working with mode rewrite. And I'm going to assume that mysite.com is my base website. And I want to redirect and rewrite to myboats.com. That is located in this location. And if I list this, I can see the index.html. If I cat the content of index.html here, I can see it says, welcome to myboats.com, h1. So we'll go ahead and make this one the new site, myboats.com. The old site will be mysite.com. And in order for our local host server to serve to those locations, there's one more file that needs to be edited by the root user. That file is called the host file in the Debian-based Linux system. It's located under the root file directory slash etc slash hosts. If we want to look at that, we can cat etc slash hosts, plural. And I had gone into the host folder and added mysite.com, mysite.net, mysite.biz, mysite.org, and myboats.com because I'm going to use this in some rewrite rules so that they actually serve from my local host. It doesn't matter if you're in a Linux operating system or if you're in a Mac or a Windows OS, you'll have a host file that you will want the browser to direct to the local host IP, which will always be 127.0.0.1. So in this case, if I type my site or mysite.com, .net, .biz, .org, it'll direct to my local host server. It'll serve from those two virtual hosts that I had previously set up. Hello and welcome back. In this segment, we're starting into the mode rewrite itself. Initially, we need to talk about mode rewrite variables. Those are assigned by the Apache web server at the time that the request is made or the URL comes into the web server. And we sometimes will use those variables in the rewrite rules and in rewrite conditions later on. But let's at least understand what rewrite variables are. If we look at the rewrite variables here, we can see that we've got a syntax that is specific to variables. It starts with a percent, curly brace, uppercase, the name of the variable, ending curly brace. And I'm showing just a few of these here. The ones that are used probably some of the most common ones, percent host, request URI, query string, HTTP host, refer, SSL protocol. Some of these are what are considered Apache variables. Some of them are just simply the protocol HTTP variables. And some of them, you know, this one in this case is an SSL variable. So if we toggle over to our browser, we should be able to try out our new host. So let's go ahead and type mysite.com, which it looks like it's going to be default to. And we actually see that we are on mysite.com. Serving that site just fine. Let's try myboats.com. And in fact, we are serving myboats.com. All right, so now that that's established, I did find a website that I will put this link in the resources at the end of our class. This one here is mode rewrite variables cheat sheet. It's probably the best one that I found online. Now, if you come in here, you'll see a listing scrolling down a list of mod rewrite variables. All of these are variables and they're all linked to below where you can go down and take a look at what they do, what is the typical variable setting when the variable is saved and how to actually use these variables. This is the mod rewrite or Apache set right here. This is the HTTP protocol variables, and these are the SSL variables in case you need them. So as an example, we could come down in and say, you know, if we wanted to use percent curly brace host uppercase curly brace, it would return www.askapache.com in this case. If we wanted to get the HTTP host using percent curly brace, case sensitive letters just like this with a curly brace, we'll get www.askapache.com. Down in here further, query string. If there's a URL that includes a query string, it'll show the query string here in its entirety. In this case, there's only one. Addressing, request, method, get. Using this variable, you'll get the string get. Request URI. 
percent curly brace request underscore URI will return in this case this URL to an index.php file and so forth. So this is a really good reference here for server variables and we probably will go back in and look at these on occasion. Let's go over to our terminal application, navigate down inside the mysite.com directory, which is located at var www.mysite.com. List this, we can see there's our index file. That's what's creating the welcome to mysite.com. And here, let's create a HD access file. And I'm gonna do so using the regular gedit tool, the graphical user interface text editor. I'll do it with sudo, so we make sure that we can actually edit in these files because they are permissioned to the root user. sudo gedit.htaccess. That'll open up an HT access file. The very first thing we'd want to put in here is the rewrite engine on. Now remember, HT access files are specific to the current directory. So in this case, it would be specific to var slash www slash mysite.com directory. So rewrite engine on. And then let's start with a rewrite rule with syntax that looks like this. And we'll use a pound sign and just use this for reference. Rewrite rule. The pattern is a parameter, and the revision to the rule is here. And then after that, you've got a series of flags in square brackets, dot, dot, dot. Just trying out our rewrite rule, let's just say that we want to do a simple redirect. That's probably the easiest thing to do to start with. Rewrite rule. We'll use the caret symbol, which it needs to start with index dot. We use a backslash to escape the dot so the dot is not interpreted as a wildcard character, HTML, and end this with a dollar sign. This is the regular expression pattern. This is where you'll put your regular expressions. And then the revision to the URL. And that will go to, in this case, http colon slash slash myboats.com. And we'll put a flag on the end of here just for the heck of it. We don't need it for this necessarily but we'll put one on here and we're gonna use the L flag, which we'll talk about flags later, but in this case, the L flag stands for the last rewrite rule. We'll go ahead and save this, toggle back over to our browser and go back into mysite.com. Now, as soon as I execute this return, it should redirect me, if I've done this correctly, to myboats.com, and it should change the URL as listed in the location bar of the browser here. So let's go ahead and do that. And there it is. Welcome to myboats.com. So in this case, I was able to create a rewrite rule with simply the index reading the dot as a literal character, HTML, and have it redirect to http colon slash slash myboats.com I used a flag at the end, which means in this case, that's the last rule. Because we can compound rules together and we can add more lines with the rewrite rule direct as one after the other, and it compiles together. So this would be the new result. The next rule will take the output of this rule as the input of the next pattern, maybe rewrite that to something else and so forth until such time as it finds an L flag, which means it's the actual last rule. So with that, we'll take a short break, come back and try a few more of these rewrite rules out. See you then. In this lesson, we're going to work a few more of these mode rewrite rule directives, looking at some of the other meta characters and some of the other ways that we can construct our patterns. We'll go on with rewrite rule directives, continue with some rewrite conditional directives on top of that. Later on, look at options, the base, rewrite base, and the rewrite mapping functionality. And along the way, we'll also look at flags. The last time we looked at the rewrite rule, we actually just simply used it for a redirect. Well, that's okay, but the mode alias redirect directive would be better for a simple redirect than mod rewrite. Moving on to mod rewrite, I have included here some syntax information about the rewrite rule directive. Here we have rewrite rule, the very first part is the pattern as indicated here. In this example, this is the regex pattern. The substitution is this portion of it from the dot dot all the way over here. The syntax ends typically with a set of brackets with one or more flags. 
So pattern is the input URL that is matched. Substitution is the replacement or revision. And the flags are behavior options for the mod rewrite module. One thing to note about this rule. Initially, it knows about the protocol and domain you're at. So what you are pattern matching to is not something like this. In other words, you're not going to be trying to match HTTP colon slash slash mysite.com. Okay, that's implied. So what we'd be worried about is anything following this, including the forward slash. That's what we write our pattern match regular expression for is anything actually following the protocol wrapper here and the actual website domain and forward slash. So we don't need to worry about this, at least in terms of the pattern match itself. Looking at this pattern, we have a pattern that we're looking for following the domain, as I just mentioned, boats forward slash one. Now that pattern can be rewritten as dot dot slash myboats.com slash boats slash one with the L flag indicating the last rewrite rule. If you note the substitution string here, it starts with dot dot forward slash myboats, which means the myboats.com is on the same server just in another directory called myboats.com. And so we're backing up out of the mysite.com one level, dropping down into the myboats.com and then appending this rewrite to the URL as boats slash one that matches this pattern here. So we're essentially just moving from one site to another locally. Now, if you're not moving to a local site, or actually if you are, you can still do it this way. HTTP colon slash slash myboats.com. That'll also work if you have your host file set to serve myboats.com from the local web server, as we mentioned in the previous setup lesson. We have boats slash one, we are appending to this URL the same thing, boat slash one. All we're basically changing here is the domain location. So in most cases you wanna abstract these values using variables. If I was looking for maybe a boat identifier as one, I could say anything that follows boats to be something like this. Set of parens, let's do a character class zero through nine, the closing bracket, another paren, closing paren, we have abstracted the actual identification number here, and we would say in this case also plus one or more of the previous character class. So here we have a zero to nine character class. This will match anything following boats slash with one or more numbers. We also create a back reference where we can use it in the substitution string with the dollar one. Now dollar one represents exactly what it found in the input URL after the boat slash and replaces it right here. So it doesn't matter what the number is that comes in here, we'll pick that same number up and stick it over here using one. This is the variable that we have created with this paren grouping here. Now this is a specific character class. The other way we could do this is simply using the shortcut and it looks like this. Backslash D is the same thing as square bracket zero through nine square bracket character class. This does exactly the same thing. So now we have an abstracted part of our URL here in this variable. But we also have an explicit boats string here. Maybe we want to be less explicit and use a variable for this. So we could simply say A to Z, which is a range, any character A to Z, lowercase, A to Z, uppercase, and we'll end that character class with a bracket, one or more of those. That's what the plus symbol does. So in this case, we've got A to Z upper lower case, one or more preceding a forward slash. The forward slash is a character that is literal. The rest of this is abstracted to whatever characters there are, either upper or lower case, one or more of those forward slash and any digit zero through nine, one or more of those. And because this is the first grouping paren set, then boats becomes dollar one. And the zero through nine character class now becomes dollar two because it's the second set of parens. Now we have abstracted whatever this happens to be following the domain forward slash. And we've abstracted this part of it, which would be numeric with dollar one, dollar two, and we're good to go. This one would work really good if you're just changing simple directory location. You don't have to be explicit with that directory name nor do you have to be explicit with the actual identification number of a particular boat.
You can also come in here and say, you've got it here. But in our new rewrite, we're reorganizing our website such that we have a directory level broke down beyond what was in our original site. So we may say products and then boats and then the boat ID. So this is a nice rewrite rule for changing the actual structure of the site in addition to the domain that our new site lives on. And now one last thing I want to reiterate about this, when you have a rewrite rule, rewriting this URL to this, the rewrite rules happen consecutively. So in other words, this one would execute first, rewrite the output to this. If this wasn't the last rewrite, you could have continue down below and another rewrite rule where you would take the output of the prior substitution as input for the next substitution and then maybe do something else. One rewrite rule is chained in this case with the C output of the prior rule substitution will be the input to the next rewrite rule regular expression. In this segment, we'll continue discussing the rewrite rule directive, but this time we're gonna couple it with the rewrite conditional directive. We're gonna throw some conditions at the rewrite rule make them a little bit more complex, just to see how that conditional works. I have started with the syntax discussion with the rewrite condition directive. The way it works is rewrite cond, followed by the test string that you're actually gonna test against, followed by the regular expression pattern, and then lastly, any flags that you might find applicable to the rewrite condition itself. Now I have started out with a rewrite cond I'm using the HTTP underscore host, which is a variable that returns this example here, HTTP underscore host will return the actual host part of the request. That's what will be in here. Now, in this case, if we're working with mysite.com, it should be mysite.com or perhaps www.mysite.com. Whatever is in there, if it happens to match the pattern, which is this part of the rewrite conditional, and it includes a www slash dot my grouping the A to Z upper and lower letter ranges, zero to nine and an underscore with this shortcut backslash W, one or more of those, in addition to a literal dot and then com, this will evaluate to a true statement. Anytime a rewrite condition evaluates to a true statement, it continues on with other conditions that may exist underneath that. As long as these rewrite conditions evaluate true, the rewrite rule at the end will execute. So in this case, rewrite condition will take whatever the host name is, and if it is www backslash dot as a literal, my, and then wildcarding here, backslash literal dot com, and nc flag means no case or case insensitive, then we're going to apply this rule to it. And we can take and string these conditionals together where we have another one that says something like rewrite condition. Here we'll say percent one, not starting with boats, lowercase, or in this case, we could make this case insensitive to dollar sign. So we're looking for the host being part of this, if we want a www backslash dot, or leave this out if we don't, my, and then wildcarding on the remainder of that domain name, dot com, no case means case insensitive, we could go on to rewrite condition percent one. Now percent one is a conditional back reference for the pattern that matched. So as long as this condition right here evaluates true, that pattern match, whatever that match was, will be placed in the rewrite condition back reference percent one compared against the next pattern match being, in this case, the not operator will say negating what's in here. So if we're not boats, or if we are boats, depending on how you wanna write this, if you wanna have it as boats, or if you wanna have it as not boats, then depending on if this evaluates true, we'll define whether or not the rewrite rule actually executes. Now let's write another one, rewrite condition. And this time we'll say percent request file name. The request file name would be something like index.html or index.php or something like that. We'll put in something like this, index backslash on the dot, HTML, dollar sign, 
We'll say, just to allow no case, we'll say no case here too. And then based on that, as long as the request file name is right here, request file name, this whole path or the actual index.php file like they've got here, in our case, it would be index.html. If that pass is true with no case required on the actual file name, then we're gonna go ahead and rewrite. So we've got three of them here that would have to pass conditionally in order for the rewrite rule to execute. You can string these together and have multiple rewrite rules. And again, if you do, the output of one rewrite rule substitution will be the input of the next one. So let's disregard this for now. Let's create some rule conditionals for an error page. If we had an error page, it might look something like this. Request file name, and we'll start off with this conditional. If request file name, in this case, we'll leave the non-case flag off, and we'll say that's not dash F. In a rewrite condition means if the request file name is not a file, and rewrite condition, request file name, is not a directory, or in this case, lowercase d, then we wanna to write to a 404 error page. Rewrite, rule, and we'll accept anything that's not a file name and that's not a directory because we don't wanna issue those. We'll take everything here and say, we'll rewrite it to a 404.html error, and we'll just say that in this case, this will be the last rule and, or we can nav to a directory where we got say errors and then a 404 HTML, something like that. Hello, and welcome back to our discussion on the rewrite conditional directive. How about if we want to employ rewrite conditions for security reasons? Let's say we had a bad user agent that was trying to inject or attack our website. We could do something like this with HTTP user agent. The HTTP user agent looks like this. So we could look at the string that's coming in and find out if it's something from, well, let's say a bot like this. And we'll just say star something wild and the ending regular expression. So anything that comes in a user agent string that's put in the HTTP user agent variable, if it contains the caret or the string BOT and then anything that's after that, then we're going to reject it with an or statement flag. An or flag means that this right condition is tied conditionally to the next and subsequent right conditions to make up the total conditional statement for the rewrite rule. In this case, if it has a bot in anything, or if it has something like this, again, our or flag at the very end of this, and then any other rewrite condition, in this case, we're blacklisting bad user agents and whatever else that we want to find here. So we could continue this to be whatever. We'll just say here, dot, 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 used here just to simply indicate additional rewrite conditions. We're going to rewrite rule. All of these have to return true. This one first, this one second, this one third. Then we would want to rewrite. So we're blacklisting here. And we would want to rewrite something like this, where we do anything to not change the output. In other words, the dash is a special character in mod rewrite, which means we don't want to change anything. We don't want to rewrite anything here. We're just checking for it. And we're going to do a, an F flag at the end, which means the server will execute an HTTP 403 forbidden response. Okay, now let's do one more security-based rewrite conditional set that will protect against file injection. Somebody's trying to inject files into our site, we can use something like this. Now, what I'm talking about here with these security things, I'm just scratching the surface here. There's a lot more that you can write, rewrite conditionally to protect your site from injection or some sort of security risk. In this case, file injection. So I would say file injection, protection. Here we'll say rewrite condition and percent, in this case, request method. If you look in your variables, request method will contain the string for the method the request was made in. In this case, we may be protecting from a get request. We'll say or here. And how about a rewrite condition that says query string? Again, reference the site or the Apache website itself or the mod rewrite variables or server variables or HTTP variables. 
And in this case, let's say backslash W, which stands for lowercase a to Z range, uppercase a to Z range, zero to nine digit range, and an underscore. We'll make that set to HTTP colon slash slash. In this case, we're trying to protect our site from some query string injection to load via a URL some file someplace. So we're gonna just simply look for HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. We'll stick an or behind this. There's more rewrite conditions you can add to this file injection protection than what I've got here, but we'll minimize how many we're gonna do for this example. Query string backslash w. Here we'll protect from a literal dot, literal dot, forward slash, forward slash, optionally on the second slash, one or more, and we'll make this no case, and then write the rewrite rule to match what we've got above here, rewrite rule, star. One of these have to be true in order for the rewrite rule to write. So in this case, we're gonna say anything that is finding, we're going to not change anything like we did above, and we'll force the Apache web server to issue a forbidden response. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion with rewrite options and rewrite base. First of all, rewrite base and what its use case is, how it affects the rewrite rule, and then we'll go on to talk about some of the options that are available to us using the rewrite options directive. Now, prior to doing this, I set up a directory down below the mysite.com site. So if I navigated to var www.mysite.com, we'll see here if I list this that we have a boats directory. If I navigate down underneath boats, I have a boats.html file, which simply gives us this bit of information. Check out our new boat lineup. Okay, given that new directory here, now we need to rewrite from the mysite.com index.html down underneath mysite.com boats boat HTML with our mod rewrite rule. Coming over here to the HT access file that's located under var slash www slash mysite.com. If we had a rewrite rule that did something like this where we had index.html and we wanted to rewrite to a local directory, boats, boats.html and let's put the last flag on it, save this, and then accessed mysite.com, which was originally producing this from the index.html site. If we refresh this, we'll go out and check out our new bolt lineup. Now that rewrite rule substitution is relative to the local path underneath the mysite.com directory. If we were to eliminate this first boats, Apache will infer HTTP colon slash slash mysite.com in front of the boat. So it's gonna think that boats.html is underneath mysite.com. And we want to abstract this a little bit more. We could say boats.html or anything else and then change the rewrite base. So the rewrite base up until now is HTTP colon slash slash mysite.com we can change that with rewrite base and make the rewrite base bolts. At this point, this tells the subsequent rewrite rule that we are prepending bolts.html substitution with slash bolts, which is gonna cause it to look in the local directory bolts for the bolts.html file. If we save this, come into my site, it's going to say, check out our new lineup. So rewrite base is simply used in occasion where you want to rewrite to a local directory underneath mysite.com without having to specify all the actual local paths, create a new base path with slash boats, which will represent the local directory where your new HTML files are found. So that's basically what rewrite base is for. It specifies the URL prefix to use for a per directory access rewrite rule. Now at this point, let's look at the rewrite options. Here we can specify options for the mod rewrite module. Let's say we wanted to inherit mod rewrite rules from a parent HT access file. We could do that with rewrite options. In this case, inherit. This is where the current configuration will inherit from a parent configuration. And it's a per directory context that this works in. Any rule specified in a parent HT access file relative to the current directory, 
would be specified at the end of this rewrite rule. So in this case, we've got this rule here, we'll pull the rewrite rules from the parent and place them after this rewrite rule here. We also have an option where we can say inherit before, which tells the mod rewrite module, inherit from the parent rules prior to our current rules. We can actually bring these in, have those rewriting our URL, and the results of those rewrite rules will be applied to the rewrite rule here in our HT access file. Now there's other rewrite options like allow no slash, allow any URI. These options are very, very seldom used but have specific use cases if you need them. And I'm not gonna go into every single one of these options. The last one I will mention is merge base. With merge base, we'll merge any rewrite base directives found in a parent directory to apply to this subdirectory. Now, which for Apache version 2.4 is actually the default. So to recap, the rewrite base allows us to write to a local directory, and the rewrite options like inherit, inherit below, merge base, allow any URI, are just options that if we need them can change the behavior of the mod rewrite engine. In this section, we're gonna talk about rewrite mapping. Probably the most underutilized part of the mod rewrite engine, but probably the most powerful part, and that's rewrite map. So the very first thing I want to do is familiarize you with what I've set up to make all this work. Inside the terminal application, if I navigate to var www, list this, you'll see that I have created a myboats.com site alongside the mysite.com site. Inside myboats.com, list this, we'll see that we have a models folder, an index.html, simply introducing our models to our general public. Inside of our models directory, we have the bouncer HTML, cruiser HTML list, and roller. The bouncer, cruiser, and roller are three kayaks in our product line. The list HTML is nothing more than a list of anchor links. And if we back up two levels and go down inside of mysite.com, list this, we'll see that we have the index.html file, which was our old home site, mysite.com. And inside of here, if we list this with an LA switch, we'll see that we indeed have an HT access file. I've also created a rewrite map addition to our Apache virtual host configuration for mysite.com, and I've also added a file located at user, local. If I list this, you'll see my boats. Set directory to my boats. List this, you'll see boat map. This here is the text file that I'll be using for rewrite map initially with the text type of mapping. In our text editor, I have the mysite.com.conf file, which is the main virtual host configuration file located under Etsy, Apache 2, sites available for the mysite.com. Now this configuration file contains the rewrite map syntax for our rewrite mapping. The rewrite map syntax can only be located within the virtual host tag config. Can't put it under directory, can't put it in the HT access file, it has to be either in the virtual host, assuming you have more than one host, or in the main apache2.config, or what your main Apache configuration file is. That might be http.config. So inside the virtual host for my site.com.conf, I've got this section where the syntax loaded. I'm starting off with the rewrite engine on directive. I go on to the rewrite map syntax, which includes the map name, where the map name is the arbitrary name for the PHP map file that we'll look at here in just a second. The map type is the map source type, or one of TXT, RD, which is random, DBM, which is an index database file, an internal function, a program, so that we can run a program if we want to, and a second database. So that's the map type that goes in this part of the syntax. The map source is the source path to the map file. The map file, as we will pop over here and look, is called boat map. We're indicating that in the name of the map. As you can see in the rewrite map directive here, 
boat map indicates that it's a text type file colon satisfying this part of the syntax and then the path to the boat map file here which is located in user local my boats and boat map the contents of the boat map file is simply nothing more than a text file and i located it here inside the boat map file now i've put the name of each of my product kayaks cruiser bouncer roller space delimited then the actual path to the information about each boat. This is a full URL path to my new site, myboats.com. I've got a directory models and HTML pages identifying cool things about each one of these models. This map file is what the rewrite rule will map to to find the names for each one of these products, map them to a new location. Back here at the mysite.com.config, which will now include the rewrite map information, the name of the map file, txt, and this location right here. Once I've added this bit of information into my virtual host or my main Apache configuration file, I would need to go in and restart my web server. So in this case, it would be sudo service Apache 2 restart. So to restart that virtual host, myboats.com, now back over here in the htaccess file, which is located under my original site, mysite.com, I have the rewrite engine on directive. The rewrite rule states now that anything that has a models in the URL, forward slash, and then anything following that will be mapped to the map file I named boat map. The values encapsulated with the parens will be assigned to the $1 back reference. And a pipe symbol here indicates that if nothing is returned from the boat map file, the HTTP myboats.com models list.html file will show. Inside of our boat map, cruiser, bouncer, roller, only three entries here. And as long as the value following the model slash is one of cruiser, bouncer, roller, that value will be placed in the back reference here, passed in to a search in the boat map file. If found, then the value for that particular item will be returned, which in the case of each one of these is these URLs here. So for example, if I passed in something that doesn't exist in that file, then by default, we're going to simply return a list to all the models that we have in our product lineup. That's what this segment of the mapping does. At the end, we'll use the flags R means rewrite, and the L means it's the last rewrite rule. So if everything is done correctly here, no matter what we enter in to the URL following the models forward slash should be taken care of either by one of our cool little boat front end pages, like introducing the cruiser touring kayak, or the list page, which would then include just an unordered list of links to all of our boats, depending on the links that the user plugs in following the models forward slash. Let's give this a try. Coming over to our browser, now if we type my sites, mysite.com, models, and let's just put cruiser in here, just like it says here. If it's found in that boat map file, it should map to the cruiser HTML, and we should see the front end for the cruiser model. And sure enough, there it is. If we type roller, it should go to the roller, and it does. If we type bouncer, it does. If we type something other than one of these three, mysite.com, models, wave, which is not one of our models in our product lineup, it should get us to a list. At this point, we can navigate to each one of these. So it looks like it's working back here at the HD Access site. To just wrap up our rewrite rule, look for anything following models forward slash. Took that value, mapped it in as a back reference to boat map. If found, it would produce the URL to the boat product. If not, it would list the available boats that we have in our lineup. And in our next segment, we'll learn how to work with the random rewrite map type. Hello, and welcome back to our discussion on mod rewrite directives. This time we're gonna focus on the randomizing rewrite map type. Back in our gedit tool, leaving our files open that we had in our last session, we see that we have the mysite.com.conf file here. 
This time we're going to take this line, rewrite map, boat map text, and we're going to turn it into something for a randomized rewrite mapping. So let's copy, take this down, paste this, and we'll say, actually we'll change this to R&D, random boat map, we'll save the same name. This will need to be R&D, which is the next type of rewrite map. And we'll say this map will belong to RND boat, uppercase. Now we've made a change here. We'll comment out this map. We'll just leave it in here for future reference. We've made a change to our virtual host, saved. Now as such, we'll need to restart our web server. So let's do that first. sudo service, Apache 2, restart. Every time we make a change to configuration for any of these virtual hosts, we have to restart the web server. Okay, back over here, let's create a mapping file for our random mapping. And we'll take this one and save it as file, save as, and here, I'm gonna just save it as random map. I already have one here, but we'll just rewrite this, replace it, open it up. Here we'll say models. And our mapping will be for either one of the three model types that we have, cruiser, and we use the pipe symbol here, bouncer, pipe symbol here, roller. And the rewrite map will look up in this file and return one of these three model types, cruiser, bouncer, or roller. So let's delete the rest of this, save this, go on to our HT access file. And in here we'll say our rewrite rule will regular expression match the word models. Anytime we throw models in after mysite.com, it should map to that pattern. And in this case, we're gonna say RND, boat map, and the models line. And then in here, we can eliminate this default since the rewrite map random type does something different here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add HTTP colon slash slash myboats.com models. When the random mapping returns one of those model names, it'll place it right here. And so then we'll end our URL with .html. This flag will change in this case, just for the heck of it, no case, so that we can write anything we want in here, whatever case it is. Okay, so now let's give this a try. In our browser, if we type mysite.com models, it should randomly grab one of those model types from the randomized file that we created and return the URL with the model type prepended in front of the .html. Let's see if this works. And sure enough, we got bouncer here. If we type mysite.com models again, we should randomly get something other than bouncer and we got roller. And one more time, just for the heck of it, we'll say mysite.com models. And let's see, we got the bouncer again. So back here to recap on the random rewrite mapping, we made a change to the virtual host for the mysite.com because we're gonna redirect this traffic to a mapping inside of myboats.com. We commented this out, we saved this line, changed it to the map file name that we're gonna use, made the type random, gave it a link to where that can be found, the random boat type, added a models, this is just a string name, whatever you want it to be. And then we put our lineup of boat types in here, separated with the pipe symbol. And lastly, made a change to the HT access files, just simply looking for the word models, having it rewrite to the URL here. And the random boat map models line will return randomly one of those entries prepended to a .html and to rewrite to the random model HTML page. Hello, and welcome back to our discussion on mod rewrite directives. In this segment, we'll talk about the indexing DB type for rewrite map. So in the mysite.com.conf file, we'll go ahead and actually duplicate the text version because the DBM type is identical to the text version, except that it allows for indexing the data. So let's comment this out, uncomment this. We'll create a database mapping called DBM. In this case, the type will be DBM, and we'll have it look in the DBM boat uppercase map. Now, before we restart our server here, let's go ahead and actually navigate down to our boat map file and turn it into an index database mapping file. To do that, let's go over to terminal. Over here in our terminal application, 
Let's navigate down to where we have our mapping files. In this system, they're located in user, local, my boats. And if we look at this with LA, we see that this directory has read write access for the root, only read access for the group, and no access for guests. Let's change that for this whole directory, my boats. Let's navigate up one and set it to sudo chmod r for recursive, and we'll just say 777 on my bolts. And we'll list and make sure this happened. By doing this, what we're saying is any user of the system, including the Apache web server, will have read write access to this location here. Now, the last thing we need to do to make this work is make sure that the Apache 2 utils is installed. So let's sudo apt get install Apache 2 utils. Now, you may have this already installed on your system. If that's the case, then this won't reinstall. It just simply will tell you you've already got it installed. I'm gonna go ahead and let it install here. Now that that's installed, let's clear the screen and navigate back down into my boats. Now, as far as a database mapping boat map is concerned, it's identical to the original boat map file. So we see here that we have a boat map file that we can actually turn into a database boat map. So let's go back over to our gedit tool. Let's go into boat map, which was our original mapping file, just so that we can retain all these. And let's save this as dbm boat map. Now this dbm type of rewrite map works exactly like the text file does. The main difference is that if you have a large number of these entries, it's very time consuming for the Apache web server to have to parse everything in this file because straight text files are not indexed. Now this is only when you have a text mapping file that becomes large and you start noticing some performance hit for your applications. So in this case, I'm just going to turn these three lines in a database mapping boat map. It'll work exactly the same way as the text type map, only faster. Back over to our terminal. Let's list this. Here we see we've got the boat map original mapping text file. That's the one we're gonna to use to turn it into an indexed database mapping file. Apache 2 has a command as part of its utility package called httxt to dbm. Uh, we'll give it an I switch, which means this is the input file that we're gonna use, and that would be boat map. And the output file denoted with the O switch will be dbm boat map. The script will take the boat map input text file, turn it into an index dbm map file. And here we can list this again and see that we in fact have the dbm boat map map file. Now let's go ahead and restart our web server at this point so that the changes that we made originally to the virtual host configuration will take place, including the reference to the DBM boat map that we made. Sudo service Apache 2, restart. Should restart okay, it does. Back over to our mysite.com, we see that here's our DBM boat mapping that we created. We used the utility to create the boat map here. Our HT access file should work exactly the same way as it did for our text, but in this case, we're gonna change it to DBM. Save this. Now we should be able to test this out. So coming back over here, if we type mysite.com models, and we simply say cruiser, it should take us to the cruiser. That's working now. Mysite.com models roller, and that looks like that's working as well. So keep in mind, rewrite map type for DBM requires the use of the httxt to dbm script available in the Apache 2 utils. Once installed, take the map file text file input, turn it into a database indexed map file, and then call that from the rewrite map command in your virtual host. Hello, and welcome back to our discussion on the mod rewrite directives. In this case, specifically, we'll talk about external program, as well as working with one of the internal functions of rewrite map. We toggle over to our editor. Here we have the mybolts.com.conf configuration file for the virtual hosts for the mybolts.com website. In here, I've added a rewrite map directive that I'm going to call dd. Then the rewrite map type is, in this case, PRG, which means program. And then I'm going to route it over to my program file under the user directory identified here called dash dot. 
Looking at that file, we have a line here that identifies this script as a Perl script, and so therefore it'll be executed as a Perl script. The first line of code here, this dollar pipe symbol equals one, turns off output buffering, so it'll direct the output of this script right back to the rewrite rule directive. Here we have a while loop taking the standard input, whatever's passed into this while loop, in this case, whatever's being brought in on the call to this, as you will see in a minute, it'll take and do a search represented by the S here for a dash and replace it with a dot on a global basis, and then return the result using the print statement as standard out. Once that happens then, in the HT access file, we would write a rewrite rule in this case, dash means just disregard the input. Over here, we are using an Apache variable, request URI, which will return the entire URI, pass it into the dash dot application as standard input. So basically, we're going to get the entire input of the URL and pass it into the DD application into the while loop as standard in. Obviously, by making a change to the virtual host file like this, we'd need to restart our web server. So let's go ahead and do that. sudo service apache2 restart password here. Testing this out, we could come over to our website and let's just say myboats.com slash models slash cruiser dash PNG. We wanna look at the cruiser PNG model. In this case, I've just got a picture of a kayak on a lake. If I say dash PNG, and if I've configured this correctly, it'll route this whole URL here into the standard input of my Perl script, take the dash that's found here in the cruiser dash PNG and replace it with a dot and therefore return me an image of cruiser.png, which I happen to have at the directory level here. So if I execute this, and there we have it. This actually doesn't change the URL as identified here in the location bar. In fact, I do have a cruiser.png image sitting in my directory. So if I say var www.myboats.com models, list this directory, I can see in fact, I do have a cruiser.png file, which is that image I just showed you. So to recap on this, we made a change to the virtual host for myboats.com added the rewrite map directive down here, gave it the directive name that I wanna use as DD. It's a program type of map, and the map program can be found as I stored it here under the user local myboats dash dot dot PL. The contents of that turns off output buffering, takes a standard input, replaces dashes with dots, and prints out the change as standard out which is then interpreted by the rewrite rule and causes my image for the cruiser.png file to show up on my browser. The Apache web server has some internal functions that we can work with, one of which I'm gonna show you here called internal to lower. There's an option of an internal function to lower, to upper, escape and unescape, which are inversive functions taking certain characters and just translating them to and from hex key encodings. Here I'm gonna use the internal function of rewrite map, int as the internal type, and the name of the internal function I'm going to call, which in this case will be to lower. I'm going to give it a name LC, lowercase. I'll make this work from the mysite.com site. And inside mysite.com directory, I have a rewrite rule that says, anything that comes in with a models forward slash dot star will capture that as a grouping and will rewrite this to the new myboats.com directory models will call using syntax like this dollar curly brace call the lowercase function and the back reference to whatever was passed in after the forward slash in this position and when it returns the value It'll prepend to .html. We'll make this rewrite it and as the last rule here. Now we'd want to restart our web server. Okay, we've got that changed. Now we can go in here. We should be able to start with mysite.com models. And in this case, let's look for cruiser uppercase. And that should return a lowercase version of the cruiser word because that's what we are back referencing on .html. 
and it should forward us to our cruiser information site for the cruiser kayak. And sure enough, that works just fine. So we can type either cruiser uppercase or cruiser lowercase and get to the cruiser kayak. Hello and welcome back to our final rewrite section. This time we're going to talk about rewrite rule flags. Rewrite rule flags listed here on this slide from B all the way to T. I have made up a HD access rules document that we'll toggle over to here. Now here we have a sampling HD access flags file that I'll make sure that I have included in the supporting documents of our training series. Rewrite rules are simply ways for us to tell the mod rewrite engine how to deal with rewrite rules and modifying the rewrite rule behaviors themselves. As we see here, we have a number of them and I'll just cruise through this fairly quickly. The B flag here causes the rewrite rule to escape non-alphanumeric characters prior to rewrite transformations. So if we've got something following a URL looking like this, We'll take the contents of that and make sure that it's rewritten here, placed at the variable $1, and we'll escape the non-alphanumeric characters here. R causes the Apache server to issue a 302 redirect back to the client. We've seen quite a few of those in our training. The L tells mod rewrite that this is the last rule, and generally speaking, it's a good idea to use that if the rewrite rule that you're writing at the very end is the last rewrite rule, and sometimes it can actually be used for debugging purposes as well. The C flag, as we saw in our training, causes mod rewrite to build multiple rules together. So if we have one rewrite rule where we have the pattern and the substitution here and a chain flag, that means that the substitution URL then will be plugged into the next rewrite rule chained together. It's a way for us to just chain these up to make multiple complex rewrite rules. So cookies as shown in this syntax here with the name, value, domain, and optionally the lifetime and path can be set as part of the flag setting as indicated in this rewrite rule here. If we want to rewrite the call to the index.php file, we could also add to that request a cookie, in this case, logoutyesboats.com to the domain, and 30 here would be the number of minutes that that cookie is in place. DPI, as it says here, is discarding the path information attached to the URL if it's found. So if there's a path in here, which is not needed in the substitution URL, we'll discard any path information that's in here and retain only the information of the URL that is non-path specific. E is an environment variable setting here. So if we wanted to set an environment variable, we can do that. For example, here's a rewrite rule that is looking for JPEG or PNG images. The dash, if you'll recall, means not to do any rewriting at all, just simply used in this case to set an environment variable that being the log environment variable. And most often these are uppercase too, by the way. So the log environment variable would be set to a value of one. Then we can use a directive called custom log as an example here, logs access combined to the value of not log. So in this case, certain requests will not be logged. It works like L or the last rule or prevent subsequent HT access parsing pretty much interchangeable. F causes the server to send a 403 forbidden status code. And oftentimes, if there's parts of your site that you do not want to have access by anybody for whatever reason, you can simply do something like this. Let's say we've got a rule admin here. If that's contained in the URL, let's not rewrite anything on it. Let's set a 403 forbidden status code and Apache will send that back to the browser. G causes Apache to send a 410 gone status. So for example, we had the Tide Kayak at one point in time that's no longer applicable and in our product line, we could say G, here we're saying no case. So it'd be case insensitive if somebody tries to type this in, Apache will send a 410 gone status. Now, obviously that's probably not the best thing to send back to a client, but it's possible to do something like this if you choose to do it. H causes Apache to specify a handler for certain file extensions. So for example, if you need to do something like this, you can do it with H. Let's say we have a request for a PHP server file. We could set a handler 
to the MIME type of Apache X-HTTPD-PHP. In this case, the H flag would be used to specify the handler for the PHP file in the request. N causes the Apache to kind of recur back to the very first rewrite rule. So for example, if we wanted to treat these rewrites something like a while loop, this will continue to iterate or loop through. So it would cause images, the string images, as long as they are found in the URL. And once it's not, it finishes. Be careful with this one because it can cause a infinite loop situation here and lock up your server. And C causes the Apache web server to ignore case in the URL. So anything that comes into the rewrite rule here can be in either case, and the web server will ignore that. By default, it is case sensitive, but in this case here, we're gonna tell it disregard the case. And E causes Apache to not escape special characters, things like the ampersand sign and the question mark, so that we retain the integrity of the URL that's passed in. So if you pass a set of server variables that include question mark or ampersands in the URL following the models, that'll be retained and placed in the variable one. PT causes, as it says here, the Apache to treat the rewrite rule substitution string as a URI instead of a default file path, oftentimes used with the alias directive. In this case, buttons would be the alias for this path string right here. The rewrite rule then would look for this images directory, wildcarding on PNG, and rewrite the substitution using the buttons alias which in effect takes all of this string content here and places it in right here, retaining the file name of the image with an extension of GIF. QSA is a flag to tell the Apache web server to, to retain the query string if there's one appended to the URL. So here, if there's any query string appended to the data slash, that query string would be added to something like this. Let's assume that there's an item in here that you'd be looking for underneath a data directory. You can rewrite that rule to say another directory list, list.php and an item using the original item number in the $1 variable. So in this case, if we wanted to retain the query string, we can do so with QSA. QSD causes Apache to discard the query string this does exactly the opposite. So if we don't need it, we can discard it. Anything that comes in after the data is discarded and will rewrite to the list.php file. R causes the Apache to redirect the browser. We've seen that on a number of examples. Here, anything that comes in, we're simply going to redirect to our new website, mybolts.com. The C flag causes Apache to conditionally skip subsequent rules, most commonly combined with a rewrite conditions directive. Here, we're looking for a request file name. If it's not a file, then we're simply gonna write the rewrite rule. Use case here is to apply the flag. That's all it really does, because it's only looking for a single character, doing nothing with it, and skipping the subsequent two rewrite rules as indicated below. And if you'll remember, a rewrite condition will be applied to the subsequent rewrite rule, which is this one right here. So this rule does nothing more really for us than setting the flag S equals two. Finally, the T flag causes Apache to set a MIME type. So for example, if you want to set a MIME type using mod rewrite, you can state it with a rewrite rule. Here we have a .pdf extension for a file appending the request. We can set the MIME type to application slash PDF. So to recap, all of these flags, their purpose, as you can see, varied and are used to specify the behavior that we want for our individual rewrite rules. Hello and welcome back. We're going to look at a few advanced techniques for using mod rewrite. First up, we're gonna take a look at mod rewrite logging. Logging allows different warning levels and trace levels all the way from barely logging anything all the way up to logging everything that mod rewrite does. Toggling over to our gedit tool, if we go into the general Apache configuration file, which I took the liberty of opening here first, you scroll down in here, you'll find air log directive here. Air log, specify where that air log is at, and it's right now defaulting to the Apache log directory variable, air log, and in the Linux machine, it happens to be under slash var slash log slash Apache 2, you'll find the air dot log. It also set at the global level to the level warn. 
And then down in here, there's additional options for formatting, log format if you wanna mess with that. Usually I don't do anything with this, and I usually leave those warning levels and log location levels where they are in the Apache 2. But you can add more specifics to this if you want to. You can also add the specifics to the certain virtual host you're working with. You can come down inside, here's my boats.com.configuration virtual host file, and I can add the log level warnings within the directory here of my virtual host. I can also change the global directories if I want to, for the location of the air log. Now this matches the Apache base configuration, or I could create a custom access log if I wanted to do that right here. Now these aren't required, but if on a per virtual host basis, you want to do that, that's available here. It's also possible to specify the log level alerts and trace levels at the directory access level in the HT access files. As I've done here, I've got a log level specification to alert, which the general configuration had it at warning. And I'm now specifying the rewrite module to have a trace three log. You can take the same exact line and add it to myboats.config if you want it applicable to the entire web route for that domain and below, or you can do it for the entire Apache general configuration. Over here in my browser are links to the information relative to rewrite logging. This is in the Apache website relative to mod rewrite. At the top of this, we have the logging section. Mod rewrite allows us to give a log level alert. We can change this and I'll show you where to find the different levels and to specify the rewrite trace level. Here we have an example of alert and then rewrite set to trace three. And then relative to the logging itself, at this URL, you will find the level specified in this column, as well as the traces that can be used, the descriptions of each of these traces, and an example of what you'll get from these. As we see here at the very top of this, the emergency level is a uh, system is unusable, it's emergency down to alert, which is a higher log level than the base warn, warning conditions. And then debug is another warning level, and all the trace levels go from trace one to trace eight, where you can get very little information at trace one, or just about everything under the sun at trace eight. And so if you create the log level alert and trace levels at the HT access or per directory location, that will be in effect upon the next request. If you choose to do it in a virtual host directory tag like this in here, or even at the Apache 2 main general configuration file, you'll need to restart the web server again for those changes to take effect. Hello and welcome back to our advanced section of Mod Rewrite. In this segment, we'll look at a few more security concerns. We've mentioned a few of those before in a previous lesson, and a couple of things about damaging URL content. I've collected these security-related rewrite rules up in a common file. We'll just briefly talk about those again quickly, and then I've added two or three more that we can look at. So let's take a look at our HT Access examples. Here, I just simply have a file called HT Access Security, and I put some security examples in here. We had done this before in a previous lesson where we had talked about a custom error page. In this case here, we had a couple of rewrite condition statements looking for the variable for the request file name. If it's not a file, which the dash F represents, conditionally, if this pass is true, and we should probably have an or flag on the end of this, and the rewrite condition request file name is not a directory, and then we're gonna reroute anything that comes in represented by the dot asterisk, which means zero or more of any previous token represented by the dot, which is the wildcard meta character, we're gonna just reroute them to slash errors directory off our web root to a file called 404 HTML. It's custom error page here, and that'll be the last rule. Also, we had the user agent. This obviously could be used for lots of different user agents. If you have problems with specific types of user agents that are coming in, you can look at those. Here, I just set these up for bots. And sometimes these get quite lengthy, these conditionals, if you do it that way, but it's possible and then ultimately have Apache issue a forbidden response. 
Uh, file injection protection. We did this earlier before where we looked for the method. If it's not the get method and a query string that may be attached is including an HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. That might be something that's injected into our query string that we don't want. We want to protect ourselves from that. And you might even put S in here if that's appropriate. Uh, query string looking for somebody trying to back up in our directory structure, which we don't want to have we would have Apache send a forbidden response. Blocking directories. Another example would be something like taking the query string. If it includes the term admin someplace, then we're going to no case this thing, select or if this is true, then look for maybe a specific type of file under admin. In this case, we are allowing options for PHP or HTML following the index. And really we don't need or here, we could just say no case. We can also have Apache issue a forbidden response. Or simply do something like this, where we say rewrite rule, anything that contains admin backslash W, zero or more of those forward slash in the URI, we simply do nothing with it from the rewrite rule perspective and have Apache issue a forbidden response. Here's an example for rewrite to HTTPS. Let's say that something is coming in to our site that should be sent to HTTPS and not the base HTTP protocol. We could have a rewrite condition here, testing on the server port variable looking for 80. If it is not equal to 80, or in fact, if it is equal to A, depending on how you want to redirect this, then simply say rewrite rule and redirect either to secure or non-secure HTTP. Here we have a rule that is taking anything that comes in and redirecting it specifically to HTTPS colon forward slash, grabbing the host variable and adding to that the request URI, which is everything after the host, and we simply redirect at that point. Also, allowing attachments of only certain file types can be done, something like this. Rewrite condition, we could get the request file name that they're trying to upload as an attachment. And as long as it's not, say, a PHP server file, which that protects our site from allowing anybody to upload server-side code, and we'd probably want to add OR here too, to make this conditional along with the second rewrite condition. Rewrite file name, if it's a file, and finally, we'd write the rewrite rule to allow the attachment to be stored in the models brochures, and that'd be the last rule that we'll write. Reject certain HTTP methods. Let's say that we have a site that we only want to allow certain standard HTTP methods of, say, get and post. We could create a rewrite condition, get the request method variable, which should include only get or post for our site and look for optionally one of these other HTTP methods, head or optionally trace or optionally delete or optionally put. If the request method contains any of these and we are going to no case on that flag, then we're gonna have Apache issue a forbidden response. These are just some examples that are useful for security reasons for our site. User agents can be expanded quite a bit, and this is just a sampling of the sort of security measures you can use mod rewrite to help protect your site. Hello, and welcome back to our discussion on the mod rewrite advanced techniques. A few of these that we will look at here involve content generation using mod rewrite, a little bit on load redirection, and a few rewrites on access control. Over here at an HT access file, I have a few of these already pre-written for you. We'll just describe them here. Here's an example of generating static content. This is where a URL may not be valid and we would wanna generate some page content and serve it. So in this case, we'd look at the rewrite condition here, which is the request URI. If it's not dash U, the U operator here being, let's test to see if the URL is valid. And if not, this will resolve true here. We could then search for a pattern here. If the URL didn't validate, this could be pretty much any pattern here. And we would generate a static page located in a static directory here. Static build page CGI could be a script that actually builds a page and stores it locally and then returns to the top of the rewrite stack so that other aliases or redirects or rewrite rules may impact and serve the new static page. 
So this PT flag, if you'll recall, is passed through, which means it'll pass it back through the rewrites. Example of content found on another server. Let's say that we have a request URI that doesn't validate, which is the dash U again. We could say we want to rewrite that and then HTTP slash details dot myboats dot com and then taking the back reference captured here, stick it at the end of this and cause it to redirect to a different server. Here's an example of just a time-based rewrite. Let's say that we have something else we want to do depending on the time of day. And to keep it as simple as possible, we could say something like rewrite condition, get the time hour variable value, which will return a 24 hour time using two digits. And if it's greater than, let's say 07, this would represent seven o'clock in the morning, then that resolves true. The second rewrite condition in this case would take that same value and test to see if it's less than 17 hours. And if that resolves true, remember rewrite conditions without an or here are anded by default, then the rewrite rule for index, let's say HTML, is going to rewrite to index.day.html, and that would be our last rule. In other words, this following rule would not execute as long as these condition statements resolve true, and this executes. If one or the other of these two conditions does not resolve true, this first rewrite rule will not execute, but the second rewrite rule will. And therefore, we would execute and rewrite to index.nighthtml. Down here, we have an example of load redirection. Let's say that we want to distribute the site request to any number of web servers that we have running on our system. Here, we would use a rewrite map directive, which again, would need to go into the main Apache configuration file or in the virtual host block of our virtual host config. We would take the rewrite map and do something like this. Let's say load random. L random, that's just an arbitrary name we give it. It'll be a random rewrite map to user local myboats servers.txt. That file listed here shows that we have a servers naming here and then a pipe delimited set of servers that we could rewrite to. And this map file distribute our requests across four different servers. Notice that we have the number one server listed twice, which means it would be more frequently called as a server than say server two, three, and four. Maybe it's a faster machine or something. And then of course we'd have the rewrite rule that we could grab basically anything that's in here and just randomly call using the syntax to the L random load random servers, the servers call passing into it the back reference if need be and have the random server map serve our pages. Down here we have a couple of access control examples. Let's say for example, somebody's uh, been trying to link to images on our site and that's considered hot linking and you want to maybe prevent that, sort of somebody trying to steal your images. We could say rewrite condition, grab the referrer variable, and look and see if it is not, in this case, www.mybolts.com. And this could be the question mark here in this regex would say that it could be preceded with www. or not at all, or simply mybolts.com. If it's not one of those two and it's not empty, then we're going to rewrite rule to anything that is appended with a GIF, JPEG, or PNG at the very end to forbidden. So obviously any domain outside of our domain would not have access to our GIF, JPEGs, or PNG files. How about if we want to prevent access from a remote host and sort of blacklist that remote host so that that remote host either has a blacklist HTML response or just a forbidden response. In this case, we've got a rewrite condition. We're gonna grab the variable for remote address or remote host. Both of these do the same thing. Not a bad idea to include both of these conditions. And the first one would obviously be or, in this case, since we wouldn't want to and on both of these, we would or on this and look for something like an IP address that we want to block. So 36.21. Anything at that IP address, then we could either create a rewrite rule that grabs whatever is coming in and redirect it to either 
a mybolts.com blacklist HTML page where we say, hey, you're not allowed, get out of here, or simply just have Apache send a forbidden response. Hello, and here we are. It's a wrap for our mod rewrite training. We started out talking about installation, getting the module running, the virtual host set up, testing that configuration to make sure it worked correctly. We talked about how mod rewrite usage works, generally speaking. We went into regular expressions and discussed how a regular expression pattern works, and especially how it works within mod rewrite and how it's used in the condition directive. We discussed how to work with rewrite variables and how to use them in the condition directives and in the rewrite rules themselves. We talked about rewrite rules, how they are constructed, and how one substitution can be the input for a subsequent rewrite rule. We learned how to create logic in our rewrites using the rewrite condition directive and how to string them together with multiple conditional statements. We talked about the rewrite base being what the mod rewrite starts with. We went on to the rewrite options directive to see how it is used to set special options on a per directory configuration basis. We talked about the rewrite map directive in detail. We then went on to rewrite rule flags. And finally, we finished up an advanced rewrite section where we talked about logging, security, content generation, a little on load distribution and some access control rewrites. I'd like to thank you for taking our class on Mod Rewrite, and hopefully you've learned a few things to add to your toolbox. Please be sure to check out the text documents that I've included with the course materials, along with all of the rewrite and virtual host configuration files. Have a great day.